On a crisp morning in April 1950, the engines of the PB4Y2 privateer, nicknamed the Turbulent Turtle, roared to life on a runway of Wiesbaden, West Germany. This aircraft, a veteran of World War II's Pacific Theater, prepared for a journey deep into the Baltic Sea's tension-filled skies. The privateer, with its advanced modifications, was a shadow in the sky, a ghostly presence tasked with a mission as dangerous as it was crucial. It would pierce the Iron Curtain and gather critical electronic and signals intelligence. The turbulent turtle, born from the legacy of the B-24 Liberator and adapted for the Navy's demanding requirements, was no ordinary aircraft. Its fuselage had been stretched to accommodate state-of-the-art electronic countermeasures and radar antennas, transforming it into a flying fortress, bristling with a dozen 50 caliber machine guns. But as the turbulent turtle neared the coast of Liepaja, Latvia, the quiet hum of its engines was soon drowned out by the ominous roar of Soviet LA-11 fighters. As the Soviet fighters closed in, the crew of the turbulent turtle faced a dire situation. Their mission of intelligence gathering suddenly became secondary to the immediate challenge of survival. The B-24 Liberator was a four-engine heavy bomber aircraft used extensively by the United States Army Air Forces throughout World War II. It was produced in more numbers than any other American military aircraft of its era, with over 18,000 units built. The B-24 featured a distinctive twin-tail design and a high-mounted Davis wing, providing long range and high speed. Its large bomb bay could carry around 8,000 pounds, making it well-suited for strategic bombing operations. Powered by four Pratt & Whitney R-1830 radial engines, the B-24 had a maximum speed of over 300 miles per hour and a range of more than 2,000 miles. It carried a crew of 10, including pilots, bombardiers, gunners, and navigators. The B-24 bomber played an essential role in bombing campaigns against Axis targets in Europe, North Africa, and the Pacific Theater. Its popularity resided in its wide range of mission compatibility, which included long-range strategic bombing, anti-submarine patrols, and airborne supply operations. Nevertheless, despite its versatility and effectiveness, the B-24 was known for its challenging handling characteristics, earning it the nickname the Flying Coffin among some crews. Still, the bomber's popularity convinced the United States Navy to employ it with a modified airframe for its naval operations. The first bombers delivered to the Navy were dubbed PB-4Y-1 Liberators and featured minor naval modifications. Other conversions included using a tail belonging to a Douglas B-23 Dragon, a vertical fin from a C-54 transport, and even the experimentation of a ball turret instead of the standard nose turret. Even after all these iterations, the Navy was unsatisfied and asked Consolidated Aircraft for a fully-fledged navalized design. The result was the PB-4Y2 Privateer, first delivered in 1943 for the Navy for dedicated long-range patrols and bombing operations. The Privateer was relatively similar to the Liberator, but it was tailored specifically for naval operations. First and foremost, the fuselage was lengthened to house a vigilant flight engineer station, where the operator managed the central aircraft systems. Another change included the position of the navigator's astrodome, which was moved from the upper nose to a location behind the first dorsal gun turret. The radar antennas and electronic countermeasure communication equipment were also spread out through the fuselage, protruding from several sides, as was the case with the innovative ANAPS-2 radome that was retractable behind the nose wheel. Secondly, the privateer stood out from its big brother with a unique vertical stabilizer, a departure from its predecessor's standard twin-tail configuration. Forged from the remnants of another USAAF prototype, the B-24N, the privateer's single tail, bolstered stability and enhanced maneuverability at medium altitudes generally used for naval operations. Armed to the teeth with 12 50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns, the privateer was armed with a defensive arsenal that boasted power and precision, omitting the Liberator's ventral turret for weight-saving measures. The M2 machine guns were strategically placed along the privateer to protect it from all zones and shoot down any enemy threat that sought to flank it. Freed from the encumbrance of turbochargers, as the aircraft was not required to fly at high altitudes, the privateer ascended the skies with lethal agility. Crafted for the arduous demands of maritime missions, this adaptation aimed to combat pilot fatigue, a persistent foe and prolonged patrols, which included an additional seat for a flight engineer crew member. The 
The first units of the privateer entered service in late 1943, but did not begin to make an impact until the last months of 1944. Patrol Bomber Squadrons 118 and 119 were the first fleet squadrons to be equipped with the new aircraft. The majority of the 739 privateers were delivered to the U.S. Navy after the conclusion of the global conflict in Europe. Nevertheless, several squadrons managed to see service in the Pacific Theater, commencing on January 6, 1945, and according to their crews, delivered outstanding performances. These units excelled in various roles, including surveillance, search and rescue, electronic countermeasures, and communication relays in the Marianas. The privateers also ravaged the Pacific with offensive operations, beginning in March 1945. The Chinese coasts and the northern portion of Okinawa were subjected to offensive missions conducted by Patrol Bomber Squadron 119 out of Clark Field in the Philippines. Privateers also conducted military operations in the Gulf of Tonkin and the skies above French Indochina before the Japanese surrender. During the invasion of the volcanic island of Iwo Jima, Navy privateers conducted 16-hour-long operations, which searched for a range of objectives from enemy radar, radio and navigation stations, troop ships, land objectives, and sea targets. They also reported on weather conditions, enemy positions, and operations, located down airmen over the sea, and coordinated SAR, or search and rescue operations. As if that was not enough, the Navy privateers also provided cover for Army Air Force's B-29 bomber operations above the skies of mainland Japan. Besides its military role, the Navy also employed the PB-4Y2 privateers for typhoon and hurricane hunters during the last months of the war against the Japanese Empire. Monitoring typhoons was, on occasion, more dangerous than flying over active combat zones. Such was the tragedy of Buno's 59415 and 59716, which were lost during hurricane hunting missions. The initial aircraft suffered a mechanical failure and went down during an examination of a Category 1 typhoon in the vicinity of Bataan Island near the Philippines. The second aircraft was lost during a Super Typhoon Doris reconnaissance mission on December 16, 1953, near the small island of Agrian, north of Guam. However, no trace of the crew or wreckage of the plane was ever found. Despite their aging technology, the Navy employed the privateers successfully during the outbreak of the Korean War. Following the invasion of South Korea by the Communist forces of the North in June 1950, the Navy deployed its PB-4Y2 privateers for patrol missions to detect Chinese or North Korean seaborne infiltrators. PB-4Y2s flew through the darkness on daring firefly missions, their engines roaring as they dropped parachute flares to illuminate the treacherous terrain below for the United Nations troops engaging the enemy in nighttime operations or provide them with better visibility when besieged by Communist soldiers. With each flare cast into the night, the pilots faced enemy fire. They navigated through the chaos to detect and thwart North Korean and Chinese seaborne infiltrators. But the privateer's valor extended far beyond the Korean Peninsula. Along the frigid waters of the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China, these Navy aircraft served as the vanguard of intelligence, their wings slicing through enemy airspace as they conducted vital signals intelligence, or SIGINT, flights. These missions were considered high risk and had high rewards, as they required the aircraft to approach or penetrate enemy territory to eavesdrop on enemy radar signals or radio traffic. The air-to-ground and air-to-air -air communication between interception controllers and pilots was precious for intelligence analysts. The easiest way to obtain this information was to provoke the enemy's air defenses to launch an aircraft interception. On April 8, 1950, Soviet LA-11 fighters unleashed a hail of fire against a PB-4Y2 privateer known as the Turbulent Turtle. Assigned to Patrol Squadron 26, or VP-26, the brave crew met their fate off the coast of Liapaya, Latvia, after enemy anti-aircraft fire tore through the fuselage of the aircraft. The shooting down of the American aircraft by the USSR led to new tensions between both nations, with the Soviet Union stating, quote, the plane penetrated the territory of the Soviet Union to a distance of 21 kilometers. A flight of Soviet fighters took off from a nearby airdrome and demanded that the American plane follow it and land at the airdrome. The American plane not only failed to comply with this demand, but opened fire on the Soviet planes. Owing to this, an advanced Soviet fighter was forced to open fire in reply, after which the American plane turned toward the sea and disappeared. The privateer's crew was never seen again.
during the early years of the Cold War, the privateers were also considered for delivery of nuclear weapons. Some PB-4Y2s were specially modified to deliver second-generation atomic bombs, but none were used to conduct tests during their service. Over 40 privateers were also given to the Nationalist Chinese Air Force, led by Chiang Kai-shek, to help them fight against the communist forces led by Mao during the Chinese Civil War. They were employed in similar roles, but were ultimately destroyed or captured by the Red Chinese People's Army Air Force when Chiang Kai-shek retreated to Taiwan. Other post-war combat services included the French Air Force. Like China and Korea, French Indochina was engulfed in a civil war between the colonial regime and the communist insurgents, led by a nationalistic leader, Ho Chi Minh. The war between the French and the Viet Minh escalated in the early 1950s, leading the military to request military assets from other allies. As a result, over 20 privateers were provided to the Aeronautique Naval for service with the French colonial army in Vietnam. The reliable privateers were used as strategic bombers to destroy Viet Minh troops scattered across the countryside and the jungles of Southeast Asia. The aircraft remained operational until the French colonial troops were decisively defeated during the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Only four out of 22 aircraft were lost in combat. Six were returned to U.S. service, and the remaining 12 were flown to North Africa, where they fought in the Algerian Uprising and later during the Suez Incident of the late 1950s. In 1961, the operational privateers were scrapped in favor of the new American Lockheed P-2V Neptunes. As for those that remained under American Navy control, they were retired in 1954 and transferred to the U.S. Coast Guard. Some were adapted as radio control target drones off Point Magu, California in the early 1960s. The last privateer, flying under callsign Opposite 31 and carrying the ironic nickname Lucky Pierre, was shot down by a bullpup missile with an experimental proximity fuse that turned the bullpup into an air-to-air -air weapon. When the U.S. Coast Guard no longer found a use for its search-and-rescue privateers, the aging aircraft became anti-forest fire water bombers. These Coast Guard privateers removed the side and nose turrets and rebuilt the nose with a vast, glazed observation dome. Some privateers also found their way to the civilian market after being sold as surplus. Civilians who purchased them gave the aircraft new life after modifying them with new Wright R2600 engines and the installation of Bore 8 water slurry tanks to use them as air tankers. These civilian modified aircraft were known as super privateers and remained in service until 2002, bringing the life of the aircraft to an end almost six decades after its introduction.